The most public view before every launch is when the crew leaves crew quarters and walks out to the vehicle which will transport them to the launch site. And here we are on my fifth and final flight with a crew of seven on our way out to the pad. Of course, before we get ready to go out to the pad, there's an extensive uh, time during which we test our equipment, and in particular the pressure suits which we wear. Here I am sitting on a couch getting ready for the inflation of the suit. Here we are with the suit inflated. Uh, actually, when they inflate these pressure suits, you can hardly move. You stiffen up just like a little thin party balloon. And comparing this with a space suit, where you actually have to be able to bend it and do useful work, shows some of the incredible design effort that's gone into making space suits. And finally, three, two, one, and you feel a big kick in your pants and you're off. This is a picture of my first launch back in 1985. And the amazing thing there is, no matter how much people tell you about what it's going to be like, you just can't be prepared. It's, it's an extraordinary, overwhelming experience sitting on top of a rocket and riding the fire up into orbit. On my first flight, our useful job was actually supposed to just be simply putting two satellites out into orbit and doing a few experiments and coming home after four days. But one of the satellites malfunctioned, and so I ended up doing a completely unplanned spacewalk, which was the first time in NASA's history that we had ever done a spacewalk which had not been planned before the flight. On my second flight, the uh, useful work which we had to accomplish in orbit was to operate a suite of ultraviolet telescopes. We basically turned the shuttle into a mountaintop observatory, although of course it was much higher than your typical mountain. And so here I am operating the control which does the fine pointing of those ultraviolet telescopes. We spend a lot of time in orbit when we're not doing the critical work which we're assigned, basically looking out the window, observing the Earth, and taking a lot of pictures. Uh, we have probably a dozen different cameras on board for any given shuttle flight, sometimes more. So here's a nice picture of me holding one of those cameras with the Earth in the background. This is a crew picture which we took in orbit of the crew on my third space flight in 1992. Three of my flights actually had women on board. Uh, they do exactly the same work, get the same training as the men, uh, do a super job. This was also a very international crew <coughs> with uh, astronauts from Italy, Switzerland, and Costa Rica. My fourth flight was the rescue and repair mission of the Hubble Space Telescope, which after it was put into orbit in spring of 1990 was discovered to have serious optical defects which threatened its ability to carry out its uh, assigned uh, scientific investigation. So this was a very, very important mission and a wonderful experience for me both as an astrophysicist and as an astronaut. Here we are up near the top of the telescope on one of the five spacewalks that we did in the course of the repair activities. I like to call this picture, I love my suit, because a uh, space suit is really a very important thing when you, when you go outside. You wouldn't last 15 seconds without it, but not only does it have to keep you alive, but it has to uh, basically function as a miniature spacecraft. It provides communication, thermal control, water to drink, oxygen, pressurization. So it's a real marvel of modern technology. And, uh, and we do, in fact, grow very attached to our suit. And we take very good care of them. Here you see just a few of the over 200 tools that we took on the Hubble repair mission, about 50 of which we actually used. And the other ones were there as backup in case we had unforeseen difficulties, either with our tools or with the tasks. And we had to put those tools, mount them on our spacesuits, and carry them out every time we went out to work. The spacesuits get reused numerous times in the course of a mission. And so between each flight, we have to replace some of the consumables, such as the lithium hydroxide canisters, which remove the carbon dioxide from our breathing air. We also have to take our batteries out, recharge them overnight, and then load them up so that the suit is ready to go the next day. A suit properly charged up can keep you going for at least eight hours, and one of our spacewalks actually did last a little bit longer than eight hours, so we use the suits to the full capability. 
This uh, shows what it's like getting into a spacesuit. I've got the lower uh, assembly, which normally you would call your pants, uh, have already been pulled on. And then I float it into the airlock and I'm trying to uh, reach my arms up into the upper torso assembly, and which is hard mounted to the wall. It's a very tight fit, as you can see by the grimace on my face. You can also see some of the equipment hanging that we're gonna have to take out with us. Now, uh, with the help of a, uh, another crew member, I'll put on the gloves, the helmet. Then we have to breathe pure oxygen for about 40 minutes to get the remaining traces of nitrogen out of our blood because we're going to take the suit down to a pressure of slightly less than one third of an atmosphere. And if you don't get enough nitrogen out of your blood, you'll develop the bends just like a scuba diver who comes up too fast. And so after about two hours of preparation, we put on our suits, uh, open the airlock, and go out to start uh, working on Hubble. And here I am opening up the compartment, which contains a lot of the fuses. And we had a couple of bad fuses, which I had to change out. And this is a picture from my last space flight. And I'd learned enough about the system at that point to realize that you don't just have to eat disgusting gook coming out of tubes or just dehydrated stuff. We now have meals ready to eat like the uh, military does and here two of my colleagues and I prepared a, a gourmet space dinner with uh, sirloin steak and potatoes au gratin, uh, asparagus, uh, no wine despite what you may hear about uh, astronauts habits. Uh, we don't take wine into space nor do we imbibe right before space flights. Uh, we do have uh, cloth, tablecloths, and we were piping classical music through the uh, PA system of the shuttle. So it was a very civilized way to finish up my fifth and final space flight. <laughs>